Today I'm going to show you how to build the ultimate small livestock crate for like a hundred bucks in a couple hours. It fits on a standard pallet. You can lift them up from the front, the back, the sides. They fit any small animal. They're the easiest things to load animals into. You can fit four on my real work truck. If you just have a short box fake work truck, it fits in there too. Let me show you how to do it. Stay tuned. So today we're going to make a super simple livestock transport crate out of a hardwood pallet, a few sheets of OSB, and a few 2x4s. Super simple and super cheap. Let's get started. First cut a full sheet to 40 inches. For this entire project you need three sheets of plywood essentially. Uh, two of the sheets you leave the full 48 inch width and cut them to 40 inches. So you need four pieces, 48 inches by 40 inches. This is for the base, the exact size of the pallet, the roof, and the left side and the right side. I like using Chep hardwood pallets because they'll last a long, long time. These can be purchased for about $3. Now out of a couple two by fours, I need to make a frame the same dimensions as the pallet, so 48 inches and the studs are 37 inches to give me 40 inches. On one of the sides, leave it back a inch and a half uh, for the door, and I also added a middle cross piece for strength if you're stacking it. Using the other 48 inch by 40 inch piece of plywood and uh, use the sheet of, of OSB to square it up to the framing and screw that to the top. I need to cut my other two pieces, 48 by 40, for the two sides. Screw the sides level with the top. These side pieces are going to hang down the sides of the pallet four inches, but not all the way to the ground to avoid rotting. So I cut uh, four two by fours exactly 36 inches, so it'll be level. Those will just sit on the pallet. The cool thing about this is you can load it with pallet forks or anything, like full use of the pallet from either the front or the sides of the pallet. Once you have all four of your legs, then you simply flip it up onto the pallet and uh, shimmy it around to get it all level. So using plywood like this on all sides, just uh, less than a one sheet, uh, you just use the sheeting to keep everything nice and square. So screw it with uh, inch and a quarter screws or whatever right to the hardwood pallet. Now I just have to cut and rip down a piece that's essentially just uh, backing for screwing the sheeting to. I don't want the sheeting to hang down so it makes the pallet ineffective for picking up with a skid steer, tractor, pallet racking or anything like that. Now cut the sheet of plywood for the back and this dimension is 41 inches by 40 and 3 quarter inches and so you got to cut it both ways. The front doesn't match it's a little bit different because the front has the door in it. So again using the sheet of plywood or OSB or whatever you're using to square up the crate. So essentially the door will be on one half of the crate and fixed the other half of the crate. So the opening is about 20 inches and the other side I believe the sheet of uh, plywood was 19 inches. And just some backing for the sheeting to be screwed to. Out of my other scraps, found a piece that uh, is going to work for both the door and the uh, other fixed side of the front of the crate. Use the nice square sheet of OSB to square up the front of the crate perfectly as well and screw on the fixed side. Because that top framing I put an inch and a half back to accommodate for the door, just simply cut out the top inch and a half where the door is going to slide up and down. Measure the door. 
rounding around to see what I have for material. So I have a bunch of fence boards and some five quarter inch deck boards. So cut that to the height, about 40 inches each. And then I'll be ripping these down just to accommodate uh, the door sliding up and down. So the door space is inch and a half deep and the door width is 20 inches. So you just need backing uh, front and back to allow the door to freely slip up and down. So the tight opening of the door is 20 inches wide by 40 inches high, but I don't want it to cut it uh, 20 inches. So I left it about a quarter inch short. So it's really easy to slide uh, up and down. So just some scrap uh, OSB for the door, cut it both ways and perfect it's that simple some three quarter inch deck boards uh, this made it a little less than inch and a half so by screwing the half inch sheet to the three quarter inch um, the door is kind of nice and loose and it'll never get stuck on me i need something to grab to lift the door up and down so i don't want to use a piece of metal or anything so just a hole saw that i had laying around this is also an air hole and I decided to do air ventilation up high all the way around three or four holes each side um, so it doesn't get stuffy in there for the animal that's in there. Putting them up high as well in case you have small animals like chickens and don't make your holes too big. Using a standard pallet, you can use a standard pallet jack. So it's obviously frozen and cold where where I'm working so I'm taking it in the greenhouse so that I can paint it might as well paint it uh, white so that um, it doesn't get hot when I use it in the summertime for any animals that are in there so just protect my concrete don't want to get paint everywhere and put it on why bother dirtying a paint tray just uh, dump some paint on the level surface on top and put on a nice liberal coat uh, paint the air holes as well so I'm just painting the whole thing instead of not painting it maybe the paint will give you I don't know a few more years than not painted getting super fancy and dirty to a paintbrush so cutting everything in I also painted the uh, base inside I was thinking about putting a puck board but I didn't want anything slippery for the animals um, I'll just be having straw in there for whatever I'm transporting at the time. So paint the door nice and here's the final product. So again, a pallet measures 48 inches deep by 40 inches wide. I made the roof height on the inside 40 inches as well. Just it made uh, all your sheeting cuts all the same. That is plenty of height for any goat. Uh, the door is 20 inches wide by the full height and that accommodates for any goat. Like most things I build, I didn't have to buy anything. I have everything stocked up, but total cost would be about a hundred bucks. I got this idea because I borrowed the Hutterites crate a while ago and filmed it and I finally had some time and I needed my own crate to transport a goat. If the Hutterites do it, it must be right. The total construction time for this project, but that included uh, a lot of filming, took me four hours. That's complete start to finish, everything painted complete. Uh, if I didn't film, you can maybe cut that back to three hours or maybe even two. So when I'm getting a breeding male for my goat herd, this is perfect for that. If I'm taking a few goats to market, that is perfect for that. There's no sense pulling a big livestock trailer for when you just need to haul a few animals. I'm also going to be getting into some coon coon pigs. So when I purchase those, I'll be using this crate. After our barn is completed, there's no telling what we'll get. Let's go get my goat. This would work for quail chickens, ducks, turkeys, pigs, goats, anything that's small livestock. I like this system so much I can pick up the pallet from the front, the side. With my flat deck truck box I could fit four of these crates comfortably on the box. They're all uniform size, easy to strap down, so I'm planning on building 
uh, at least one more for right now and I'll probably end up with four. Anything more than that, if you're getting a, an entire herd of pigs or goats or something like that, then that's when you would need the livestock trailer. This is also really cool because two people can comfortably lift it. One person can comfortably unload it out of a truck. This guy likes the crate so much, I don't know if he wants to leave. Come on, girls, I got a surprise for you. If this video was helpful for you, let me know in the comments. Give me a like and subscribe to our Copia. We're all about trying to pass on our knowledge and not waste anybody's time with high quality, shorter videos. Everything from emergency preparedness, self-reliance, homesteading, small farming, fermented foods, canning, freeze drying, passive solar design, proper building construction, and so much more. Thanks again for watching. We really appreciate it.